freshwater snails are my favorite things in the world. They're my first love. They really are. Bottom line is 20 years later, after a tremendous amount of work, of very slow work, the species. We, we, dis we described a new species. Um, that's, that's the story. It was, there was no aha moment. It's just a lot of real hard work as a scientist. I've had, over the years, six or eight or ten undergraduates and I guess three or four graduate students, master's students involved in this. When we first pulled them out of the pond, we thought, well, they look a little strange, but Surely they must have been identified. Surely somebody has, people have been here for hundreds of years. Natural history has been done in the Charleston area for hundreds of years. Certainly, certainly these organisms have been held in the hands of somebody else and described. What we essentially did was disentangle all of the genetic relationships, all the systematic relationships among all of this group of snails that are found in the Charleston area. The snails are, are pulmonate snails, and that means they have lungs, which allows them to live in stagnant water, in water that's not heavily oxygenated. These particular snails that we're talking about live in ditches, so they're a pulmonate snail that can breathe air. Now, they have to stay wet. They, they, they could easily dry out, but they, as long as they're damp, as long as it's cool, they'll be okay. The snails are hermaphroditic. They, they have both male and female parts. They can self, although they prefer to outcross. And one of the things that struck us about them when we first pulled them out of this ditch on John's Island is um, quite strikingly black, whereas so many of these, these tadpole snails, the general type, are brown. So we did some DNA sequencing. Uh, Dr. Amy Wethington was in charge of that effort. Amy got both her undergraduate and her master's degrees here at the college. And we also did some detailed microanatomical work. Dr. John Wise, uh, another former graduate student of mine, is uh, very skilled with micro dissection. So the DNA evidence plus the microanatomy together with the controlled breeding studies ultimately led to the discovery of a new species of snail from our own backyards.